In your life, God has a plan. And for every question in your mind, God has the answer. Greetings to everyone that is tuned in. My name is Minister Renato Butcher. And of course, this is Reverend Kali Theok, Senior Pastor of Grace Church of the Nazarene. Listen, for those of you watching, hey, we just want to say thank you. And it is our prayer that you are blessed by today's program. Listen to me, you don't want to exit this video. You hear me? You don't want to exit this video because I promise you, if you watch until the end, you're going to thank us later. I, um, trust me, God has a word that is going to change your life forever. And certainly, you want to watch this video until the end. I guarantee. Most definitely. Most definitely. Now, this morning, we don't want to pass a blind eye to the fact, Pastor, that this week here in the Bahamas, we had three lives lost as a result of COVID-19. I believe uh, that's three too many. Um, I don't. I hope that we don't have any more. Um, but if we do, our hearts and our prayers goes out to all the family that lost um, those loved ones. So before we start, and you know, I just want to know if we could just open up with a prayer, yeah, that's a prayer what for the family. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you know, I just where if you tuned in, you could just bow your head and close your eyes and just pray for the Bahamas at this time. Um, but. Spirit of the living God, we just want to thank you for your grace and your mercy, your wisdom and your power, Father God. And we just ask in the name of Jesus, Father God, those families, God, that lost their loved ones, Father God, due to this COVID-19. God, we ask that you comfort them, Father God, for you said, blessed are those who mourn, for you shall comfort them. Spirit of the living God, we just ask right now that you heal them and visit them and comfort them and be their guide and their strength in this here at the time of bereavement, God. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Basta. Amen. And of course, we also pray um, for the recovery of those who are sick. And, you know, it's crazy. I've been watching the news and they say about 20, 20 a little over 20% of the persons who are, who are in quarantine or who are affected are actually healthcare workers. Um, wow. So we certainly want to and be mindful of them. If you want to keep them in prayer, we just want to thank them for all the hard work that they're doing and, you know, trying to get this country back to a sense of normalcy and trying to prevent further spreading of um, this COVID-19. Now, you know, this morning to all of you tuned in, we have a teaching that will certainly uplift and inspire you. But before we go um, any further, we just want to thank everyone who um, responded to our first episode last week, Sunday, Pastor Bajo. Um, you know, to everyone who liked our video, to everyone who shared the video, we just want to say a special thank you. Thank and you very you, much. Yeah, thank you very much. And, you know, if you're tuned in, I want you to do me a favor. Share this video with someone who you think needs encouragement. Like we always say on Grace Talk, don't be selfish with this gospel. Share it. Amen? Amen. Now, shout out to, I just want to shout out some of our viewers. Um, you want to shout out Juliet. Lou, all the way from Missouri, parts of Virginia. Shout out wow. to you responding in our, uh, to our video. Shout out to Dora Hepburn, um, Jonathan Cooper, Evelyn Grant, Evelyn, um, Noelma, Akeem Hanna, Sharmin McGinnis, all the way from Solar Rock Church to the Nazarene Cross. Shout out to um, my co worker as well. Jonathan Cooper is also my co worker, but shout out to um, Mr. Hall, Three Ounce, mm -hmm. Quentin Hall, shout out to you, um, all of you guys who've been um, responding to our video in a positive way. We just want to say thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Also, we all, uh, I want to spend send special shout out to Marlene Adley, Max and Jalisa Eugene, Tiffany Lang, Leandra, um, Pastor Adams, my friend and my brother James Timmy, uh, Maria Augustine. Listen, on behalf of Grace Talk, we say thank you for tuning in. In fact, to everyone who watched our last video, thank you. I want to encourage you to stay tuned and go ahead, like and share the videos. Uh, God bless, man. Amen, amen. Now, of course, we had a nice um, show set up for episode two to, um, today, Pastor Butcher, um, you know, for this program, but we're using Zoom today. <laughs> Zoom? You know, yeah, Zoom. Now, you know, there may be some technical difficulties because we're trying to wing it and work it. This is my first time using it. Kind of like an experiment. Um, so we play around with a little PowerPoint. We got a little PowerPoint going. Um, so now, of course, we zoom in as a result of the PM now officially making the decision to place our nation under a complete lockdown um, until Monday, I think it is. Um, but we thank God for technology, Pastor Mitchell. 
Yeah. And no. when we step into them and get the word out there to you, you know, we still plan to feed you, feed you guys some good spiritual food. Now, I hope that we are still out there practicing our health, healthy habits, you know, after we come out of complete lockdown on Monday, we still need to have our hands sanitized up. Make sure you have that, you know, put that in your hands, you know, make sure you're straight. Also, make sure you got your, then, you know, your, 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 your sanitary wipes. Possibly. I hope you got yours and make sure you got your Lysol. So, you know, you call through this video, boom, you're dead. Boom, you're dead, I'm a Lysol. <laughs> Well, I'm a last stretch, though. I got, I, I right down here. I got to get me a next one of these. But so, yeah. we encourage you to practice your health, um, your health tips and safety um, habits, even when you go out there. Amen. Yeah. Amen to that. Um, we want to encourage social distancing as well. Yeah, so, you know, whatever it takes to stay healthy, man, and yes. and and save more lives, uh, we want to put into practice. Now, Rev, after our last broadcast. Um, someone made a statement that i thought i would share with our audience and they basically believe that god sent COVID 19 on the earth to judge the wicked mm -hmm. so you know what we did is we asked for some response and opinions of this statement and i want to read some of the responses mm -hmm. um that came back to us we have our sister cindy who responded good morning i wouldn't say wicked only because everyone is exposed to COVID 19 so I think that God sent COVID-19 to make a point by letting us know he can end the world in the blink of an eye. But we don't see that. Some people prepare him by getting food and water and forgetting the word. Um, you, see the grocery, you, see the, you see them grocery lines? <laughs> they prepare mm -hmm. for the food. Listen, I passed them, got them stores a few times and I said, they make no sense. Yeah, so. and then, I mean, the line's tight. You know, the government just shut down the nation again and i just see a bunch of people in the food store and no one practices so that, social so that's distancing a great point. that's a great point sister Cindy. good point good great point. point so brother max also said i could be wrong but i never recall um god punishing the wicked and the innocent at the same time you have a sister Marsha who wrote good morning god didn't send COVID 19 but he allowed it to happen i really feel that that the things what are happening now are meant to happen we hear so many times Jesus coming and we we be like, oh, okay, but this time I feel like Jesus coming is closer than before. We have a Pastor Adams, also um, Rev who right? Hi, Pastor. This is a uh, part of end time prophecy. It has to be fulfilled. Minister Ingram, to be saved. Shout out to to be saved, by the way, Rev. Shout out to you, man. Yeah, he wrote, you know that, love to preach the gospel too. He wrote, I believe God allowed COVID-19 to come as a means to get our attention. That's the wicked and the righteous. I believe this is the perfect time for the righteous to preach the gospel and the wicked to hear the gospel. Hashtag Matthew 24. And finally, we have a sister Julia who writes, I can't believe right i believe god sent COVID 19 to us to bring us together as one and to judge the wicked now listen to everyone who commented uh we certainly thank you for being bold enough to share your views on this issue so rev my question to you is how do you really respond to someone who said god has sent COVID 19 on the earth to judge the wicked what's your response to that oh, well you know looking at that statement and uh, we just want to thank everyone who responded who are you know, if you are bold enough to respond, because sometimes, you know, when you make certain comments, um, you may take a lot of backlash, but we just want to thank those persons who were bold enough to respond. And I always say, everyone is entitled to his or her opinion. And that's your God given right. Um, but, you know, the question, did God send COVID-19 on you to judge the wicked? Again, we just want to um, look at this because um, there is no one way to look at, at addressing that statement. You know, for example, when we look at, at scripture and we, you know, look at the story of um, when God sent um, on Moses to go to Pharaoh with a message. And the message was, let my people go. And when God sent Moses with that message, we see where Pharaoh basically rejected the word and the instruction and the command of God. And the Bible even go, goes further to explain the fact that Pharaoh's heart became hardened. Um, that means that his heart became callous. It means that when your heart is hard, it means that you're unresponsive to the word of God. And that's how many of us get sometimes that God could speak to us and over and over and our hearts are just hard and callous and we just refuse to respond to the word of God. Well, 
Pharaoh is a prime example of someone whose heart was hardened. And as a result, God's released 10 plagues on Egypt. Now, we must understand that God um, sending the plagues upon Egypt was to serve for two purposes. One, um, God sent those plagues to show the Israelites that the God of their fathers was alive. Um, he sent it to show mm-hmm. that, um, their God, um, that their God was worthy of their worship. And secondly, God sent the plagues on Egypt to show Egyptian that, hey, your gods are nothing. And historically, when you look at how um, the people at that time looked at um, the Pharaoh, he was like their God. And so God was demonstrating in front of everyone and showcasing the fact that I'm more powerful than this man, y'all think, is a God, basically. And so that's the two reasons why God sent those plagues. Now, watch this, Pastor. When we look at God sending the plagues on Egypt, Uh we see that eventually going into the fourth plague where God made a distinction. Um, And so the Israelites were protected from the plagues um, in the land of Goshen while the Egyptians suffered. And so while um, the livestock of the Egyptians died, nothing happened to the livestock of the Egyptians. Um, When the Egyptians suffered from boils and hails and locusts, nothing happened to the Israelites. And I want everyone watching this to listen to me. Listen, COVID-19 is out there and it is affecting the world. And COVID-19 might be in my neighborhood, but I declare that as a child of God, we are, that, that we are covered um, by the blood of Jesus. And I declare that no harm will come near our dwelling place. Just as God covered the Israelites from the plagues, I believe that he can cover us. And thousands of people may die. Some pastors, apostles, and prophets, and bishops, and ministers may die. But listen, I know that um, we can trust God. He can cover us. He can cover our families. Um, you know, God can make a separation just as he did with the Israelites during the play. And I believe that someone watching this needs needs to hear that word today, Pastor Joe. Amen. Excellently said. Excellently said. Uh, well, as it relates to that statement, Pastor, my belief is sometimes God sends disasters to fulfill his specific purpose, like you said, um, in, with the life of Pharaoh in egypt then there are times i believe when god just allows um catastrophic events to happen you know um i don't think that nothing catches god by surprise because he's omniscient you know he's all knowing nothing it just you know god didn't know what was happening but as we look at our scripture focus in the first episode and indeed our focus for this episode the bible said suddenly a storm arose and there as they were at sea. It didn't say God sent the storm, you know. The Bible says, uh, suddenly a storm arose. God knew it was coming, Pastor, but the Bible never said God sent it. So I believe God uses events and circumstances like these to teach us important lessons from which I believe we are about to uh, uh, learn today from his word. So that's my belief of it. That's that's definitely a great point. Um, Now, for those of you watching, I'm here trying to play this... uh, PowerPoint to make sure we're on point. So I'm here trying to maneuver this Zoom. But before I make another point on the statement on whether God sent COVID-19 as a judgment on the wicked, I want to show you a short video clip um, that I saw on Facebook and just thought I would just share with you. Now it's a it's in Chinese, but it has English subtitles. And so the important thing is I want you to read closely on the subtitles that are in this video. 한번 좀더 조사를 해봐야겠지만 변종된 코로나 바이러스입니다. 코로나면 혹시 메르스? 메르스, 사스, 감기 모두 동일한 바이러스의 유전 정보를 지닌 패밀리로 보면 돼요. 코로나는 호흡기 질환을 일으키는 대표적인 바이러스고 2015년 메르스 사태 때 사망률이 20%가 넘었죠. 근데 20%는 무기로 쓰일 정도는 아니지 않나요? 아까도 말했다시피 이건 변종된 바이러스예요. 누군가 인위적으로 사망률을 90%에 육박하도록 올린 것으로 보입니다. 90%요? 그보다 더 심각한 건 코로나 바이러스는 평균 2일에서 14일에 잠복기를 거치지만 이건 노출된 후단 5분 내에 폐를 직접적으로 공격하도록 인위적으로 변종을 했어요. Now, 
어디서 들어본 것 같은데? 인위적으로 조작된 바이러스? 사망률은? 90% 그럼 생화학 테러를 준비하는 거야 빨리 정확한 테러 장소랑 시간 알아내야 돼 But you're watching that You know, the only thing that I can say after watching that is, is wow. You know, that's the only thing that I can say um, while watching that. And the amazing thing is that um, that this particular video that you just saw, um, it made reference specifically to the coronavirus. Yeah. Specifically to the coronavirus. And, and this was aired two years ago. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm showing wow. how... You know, the coronavirus was manipulated by um, um, a group of scientists to have a more aggressive and, and deadly reaction on the human body. And eventually, in the scene we just watched, it was about to be used as a terrorist attack. Now, if you're watching this, I'm not saying that um, the coronavirus that we, pre that we are presently dealing with is being used as a terrorist attack, but looking at the storyline of the videos um, that i just showed it is clear that that while these are all conspiracy theories um in the video it was the scientists possible to getting ready to release the play COVID 19 that they created and so if you're watching this we cannot escape um the reality that you know many times um disasters come upon us simply because of man's sinful and evil ways in other words, you know, many times disasters can come upon us because of us and our doing and our decision making, and it has absolutely nothing possible to do with God. But we like to stomp it on and say, "This is God's doing." Yeah, you know what? That's that's so true. I that's, that's you know a lot of times too. Even when a hurricane hit, we find those who are spiritual say, "Hey, God, send that hurricane." When in fact, Pastor, based on our geographical location and climate. We are susceptible to these kinds of storms. Also, Rev, global warming is a real phenomenon happening. Many people don't believe that, but it's something that is really happening. In addition to that, uh, the more we pollute the earth, driving cars, enjoying AC and cell phones, all of these things we cling to for comfort and entertainment results into us destroying the earth and subsequently leading to more natural disasters. My point exactly. And, you know, you see, there is no definite response in answering this particular question that, you know, where the COVID-19 and the sin is God as punishment for the wicked, because it could be God. It could be God allowing the devil to send it upon the earth, like, you know, when you read the story of Job, or it just could be because of our evil desires and our, and our actions. They might possibly just be out there, possibly, but you're a mad scientist just who just decide to manipulate this virus and just release all this problem that we're dealing with today and so the truth is no one um, has a, a monopoly in addressing the statement that god sent COVID 19 as punishment for the wicked no one has a monopoly on that um but you know i do know that in the midst of everything that has taken place that jesus has already taught us in his word that these are all signs you know, despite, you know, if it's coming, despite how they, they manifest, despite how they come, despite how they emerge, these are all signs that he's soon about to come. And so, you know, when we see things happening and going on, we need to focus less on how and why they are, they are happening. And we need to focus more on the fact that they are all a means to an end, which is the return of Jesus and the emergence of a new heaven and the emergence of a new earth. You know, and so I hope that, you know, those comments based on that statement um, that some of you may be battling and dealing with the question of whether God sent this virus or not, I hope that, you know, these commentaries basically kind of helped you and assisted you in some um, particular way or some form or some fashion. Um, now, Butcher, let us continue where we left mm -hmm. off on our last show. Um, we began looking at the story, the wind and wave of ages. And so if you're tuned in, I want you to get your Bibles in your hand. You can get the hard copy. You can get the electronic copy. It doesn't make a difference. Um, but I'm reading. I want to read from the New King James Version of the Bible. And I'm looking at Matthew chapter 8. And I'm going to be reading verse 23 to verse 27. And it says... Now when he, that's Jesus, got into the boat, 
his disciples followed him. And suddenly a great tempest arose on the sea, so that the boat was covered with the waves. But he was asleep. And then his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us. We are perishing. But Jesus said to them, Why are you fearful, O you of little faith? And then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. And so the men marveled, saying, Who can this be that even the winds and the sea obey him? Now, now, Pastor, just to recap or to spring off from episode one, um, when we look at the scripture, the Bible said Jesus and his disciples got into a boat when suddenly a storm arose. The key word there we looked at last week is suddenly quick and unexpected. And so situations and circumstances, Pastor, can, can form in our lives without mention and without warning. And our current crisis is a testament, a real testament of that, that out of nowhere here comes this pandemic that basically destroying the whole world and people are dying. Um, so we also mentioned that there arose the violent storm at sea, indicating that, hey, we all have to experience storms which sometimes come in the form of trouble. It comes in the form of hardship. It comes in the form of circumstances and all sorts of things. Pastor, you mentioned the fact that yes, storms will arise at one point or the other, but at least when they do, we have Jesus on board. So we don't have to ride out the storms of life alone. And that was powerful because many people uh, has the thought in their mind, if Jesus is with us at a time like this. And so that was very powerful when you mentioned that. Now, yes, Jesus was on board, uh, but the Bible reads that Jesus was asleep on the boat. Um, the storm was raging and the disciples were in imminent danger past. Yet yeah, Jesus is fast asleep. And we looked at that last week. And often we can feel as if God is not hearing us, especially when we are most in need. When we feel like, hey, this is a dire need. Where is God? However, again, Rev, you exhorted us that although everything seemed to have fallen apart for the disciples um, and the storm began to terrify them, disciples came to Jesus. And when the storms of life threaten us, we can come to him for help and safety. I am reminded uh, um, of the scripture, I think it's Psalm 46, that God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in the time of trouble. So that was just a recap of episode one, Pastor. Now, if you missed it, you can watch episode one of Grace Talk on Facebook or YouTube. Just type in Grace Talk, Pastor Theok, uh, and Pastor Butcher. So let me say that again, much more clear. If you missed that, um, you could miss episode one. Um, you could go back to watch episode one. Um, just type in, Grace Talk, Pastor Theoc, and Pastor Butcher. Get that? Now, again, we had a great show last week talking about this passage here in, Go in the Gospel of Matthew. So I want us to pick right up where we, where we left off in verse 25, okay? All right, so if you have your Bibles, you could follow through with us. The text says, Then his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us. We are perishing. On our last show, the point you made, Rev, in this verse was the fact that the disciples consulted Jesus in the time of their disaster. So, so building off what you talked about, I want us to take a deeper look um, at what we see taking place here. I want us to consider the way the disciples came to Jesus and actually what they said to him. The Bible said they came and awoke him saying, Lord, save us. We are perishing. So yes, Jesus was on board. And yes, the disciples did come to him. But look at the attitude of the disciples when they, when they came to Jesus. They said, Lord, save us. This suggests, Pastor, they were terrified and scared, and rightly so. Yes. You know, because there's a storm happening all around them. And the Bible says waves began to come on the boat, which indicates that, hey, this boat might have been sinking. So they, was, they came to Jesus and they were afraid and they were terrified. And secondly, they said to Jesus, we are perishing. This shows their disbelief 
of ever surviving what they were experiencing. Many of us feel the same way. We don't feel like we can survive this COVID-19 pandemic. The interesting fact is many of these disciples had seen Jesus perform many miracle signs and wonder. And so, matter of fact, they were just coming off of, of Jesus witnessing the miracle of Jesus feeding the 5,000. They saw Jesus heal so many people. And so this is what is so stunning to know that they know the miracle power of Jesus, but yet they were still afraid and they were still uh, were in disbelief at one point that they were going, that Jesus would not save them or that they were going to die. They knew he had the power to do the impossible pastor, yet they still approach him with fear and disbelief in their heart. So yes, many of us do come to God when we are in trouble and when we face difficult times, but is our attitude, is our heart in the right place? That's the big question, yes. That, yeah, that's the question. When we come to God, what is our, our heart's posture? You know, you, you, you know God can do the impossible. Unlike the disciples, many have witnessed God do so many great wonders, and some of us witness God heal people with, with some terminal illness. Some people witness God um, provide for them and do all kind of wonders. But yet, uh, we in this pandemic and many people come into God with a sense of fear and a, and a sense of disbelief. But we believe fear and disbelief hinders us. Yes, so sir. I am reminded, Pastor, of the words God told Joshua when Joshua was facing a huge challenge ahead of him. God says, have I not commanded you to be strong mm -hmm. and courageous? Yes. You know what I mean? Do not be afraid, the Bible says. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord will be with you wherever you shall go. We shouldn't come to God with fear and disbelief. He wants us to be strong. He wants us to be courageous. And and finally, my final point would be Second Timothy one and chapter seven. Chapter one and verse seven actually. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, Pastor, yeah. but of love and of power on a sound mind. So yes, we are in a crisis. Yes, people are dying. Yes, the storm is raging. But those who come to God must believe that he is, and he is a rewarder to those who diligently seek him. Amen, amen. Now, Pastor Bitter, everything you just, you're saying um, you know, is so true. And I want to add um, something, that I, something that I noticed that is very interesting. Um, and when you look at the text, um, you know, what the disciples said to Jesus. The disciples now, like you said, arriving to the place of hopelessness because of this hurricane-like storm. Um, they said, Lord, save us, we are perishing. In other words, they were saying, Jesus, we are going to die. That's what they were saying. Jesus, we are going to die. Now, with that being said, clearly with all that is going on right now in the world, in, in the world past, we are at a place where we no longer feel like we're going to die, but people are actually dying. Yeah. Dying every day, you know, in one country I saw, it's, it's said that about 8,000 people died in one day. Wow, 8,000? 8,000 8, people are dying every day because of this virus around the world. And there are reports of even spiritual leaders even dying. You know, and, and what this virus is not killing physically, it is killing psychologically, it is killing um, emotionally, financially, and even in some cases, it's killing spiritually. <laughs> And this is a reality wow. now. This is what we're dealing with. And this is what we're facing. You're right. You know, I, I, I've seen some videos going around with nurses and doctors who are trained to deal with traumas and emergencies actually leaving hospitals and having a nervous breakdown yeah. because really of what they're experiencing at this time. Mm -hmm. um, for them, they should be immune to it. Um, but it's hard watching people die daily or suffering because, you know, they can't cure this person and um, because of this pastor the prayer and the cry of the people today is no longer for for wealth or blessings or god to eradicate the enemies i don't know, I don't know if it's photo crop i mean what they call it photo made whatever but i saw in one country they had all the money like on the ground like money is useless i don't at this time. it's useless at this time and so the prayer of the people you would find today is not a prayer of god removing wealth and blessings and and moving your haters out of the way. Uh, we have one global cry that they which the world and the church coincide. Lord, save us. Just like the disciples, we are perishing. 
and an example and an experience like this can make many of us respond like them disciples, Lord save us, we are perishing. Consequently though, uh, there are many people around the world feeling a sense of fear and disbelief because of everything that is going on right now, Pastor. Wow. Now, you just mentioned something that I want to connect with, um, something in, in the text. And so if you're watching this, and I hope that you're still um, tuned into this, you're still you're playing around with this zone, but I hope you're still tuned in. Um, I want you to look in your Bible, or you can look at the screen. I hope it's up there. I can't tell until, you know, I can't tell if it's up, but look at your Bibles. Um, at verse, I want you to look at what Jesus says to the disciples in verse 26. In verse 26, Jesus says to them, why are you fearful, O oh, you of little faith? Now, looking at, at this verse, to those of you watching, we have here the battle or the war that has been going on for centuries. You know, preachers, prophets, and teachers have been discussing it, um, with discussing it for years, and the big war that's going on is fear versus faith. That's, what, that's one of the greatest wars taking place at this time, fear versus faith. And so what I want to do is I basically want to um, give some definitions as we um, go further into this teaching. I want to define these two terms that um, we, we, we basically want to talk about and go into. Now, by definition, a working definition of fear is this. Fear can be defined as an unpleasant emotion caused by threat of danger, pain, or harm. I'm going to give you that definition again. Fear can be defined as an unpleasant emotion caused by the threat of danger, pain, or harm. And possible to, that's how many of us feel right now. We feel threatened by what is going on. You know, it's like I could die next from COVID-19. It's like, you know, my, my children could die next from COVID-19. And so we feel threatened. And so um, there resides in many of us an unpleasant and unsettling emotion. And that could actually be fair. Now, a working definition of faith is this. And of course, I'm giving you um, the biblical definition of faith. Um, biblical faith can be defined as complete trust and confidence in God based on our knowledge of him. Biblical faith can be defined as complete trust and confidence in God based on our knowledge of him. Now, as we think about everything that is going on in the world, um, that is, it, it all boils down to um, whether we have faith or whether we have um, um, fear in God. Whether we have faith or fear. Now, I said biblical faith intentionally because we could have faith in a lot of things. Um, but the issue here in the text is, do we have faith in Jesus? Now, listen to me, everyone, everyone watching this. You want to know the fruits of fear? I want to give you a list of the fruits of fear. The fruits of fear are stress. It's worry. It's doubt. Um, the, the fruits of fear, depression, sadness, anger, discouragement, and frustration. And the opposite of that, the fruits of faith are joy, peace, happiness, thankfulness, hope, love, optimism, confidence. These are all fruits of faith. And so listen to me. We, we can talk about fear versus faith for the rest of this year. But I'm telling you that the state of our minds and the state of our hearts are clear indicators of which fruits we are producing. And so the question for you watching this is, are you producing fruits of fair or are you producing fruits of faith? Fruits of faith. You, might as well, you might as well go and put on, on, on Facebook. You might as well tag somebody. You might as well make that your WhatsApp status. Are you producing fruits of fair or fruits of faith? Come on, do me a favor and ask the person next to you who should be six feet away. Are you producing fruits of fair or are you producing fruits of faith possible, Joe? Wow. I mean, those are some amazing insights. But you know, um, for someone watching this may say, Pastor, man, listen, the struggle is real out here. Mm -hmm. And for some of us, we feel like the disciples in the text, Pastor, you know, a storm out here and we is coming into the boat and it feels like, hey, we're about to die. It feels hopeless um, to many. Um, listen, for some of us out here, we send ourselves past the COVID-19 out there and thousands of people that are dying. So what I can do next? Some out here of us, some of us are out here send ourselves watching this, you know, might be struggling financially because jobs shut down and there aren't no means of income. You know, bills to be paid, mortgages to be paid, school fees to be paid, you know, groceries to, to be bought. People don't have food to eat. You know, people don't have gas to put in their car. 
you know, the wife need a new quarantine hairdo. The baby needs some shoes. So, so Rev, tell us now, now, how do we get to a place of faith and avoid immersing ourselves in the ocean of fear with all the worries of all the concerns, real concerns um, that we have every day? Well, you know, I put the, the text back up there because I believe that, you know, with all these questions and concern going on, I think the answer is right there in the text. Um, you know, if you look at, at um, what Jesus asks his disciples, he asks them, um, why are you fearful? That's what he asks them. Why are you fearful? Oh, you have little faith. And so for those of you watching right now, with all that is going on, with everything that, you're, that we are dealing with, I think it has to do more with a test of faith. I think that's what it's all about, a test of faith. All of us who've been shouting in church um, for, for the past five years, all of us who've been doing the Holy Ghost Shuffle, you know, doing the Holy Ghost Shuffle and we've been praising God. All of us have been praying and fasting. Now, after all that, God will see if you still have faith in him and trust him when storms or challenges come our way. And so in this season of the church, um, Pastor Butcher, it's all a matter of who has little faith versus who has great faith. You know, in the Gospel of Mark, who gives the same account of this story, in the Gospel of Mark, Jesus um, asks his disciples why they had no faith. And in Luke's account of the same story, Jesus asks um, his disciples, where is your faith? You know, now many persons out there have their view and, and their ideologies relative to how um, we grow in faith in God. Some people think that coming to church every week increases your faith. Some people are of the view that praying and fasting produces faith or that faith comes when we witness something miraculous like um, someone in a wheelchair being healed and they're able to walk through the power of God. But the reality is that there is only one channel. There's only one um, doorway or access to faith. And that is through the word of God, Pastor Bajal. Wow. Uh, this is why the Bible also tells us, so then faith mm -hmm. cometh by hearing yes, and exactly. hearing of the word of God. And so let me say this to uh, some of you watching. I don't care how much you watch your pastor pray for people and they fall out. I don't care how much demons your chief prophet is cast out. It doesn't matter how many bottles of oil or water you buy from the man or woman of God uh, mm -hmm. to anoint or wash your home or wash yourself. Listen, none of these things grows your faith. Wow. In fact, wow. um, based on the Bible, our faith is cultivated and activated and grows the more we hear the message or exactly. the word of God. Exactly. You see? See, if you are watching this, we are so glad that you decide to watch. See, for those of you watching, I, I want to add that this is why it is extremely critical and vital, vitally important that we find programs that feed us nothing but the word of God. Because I believe that's lacking in a time like this, Pastor. Like the genuine word of God. This is this this ain't no time to be watching anyone um teach about your enemies and, and why people don't like you and how to get rich while you they live in like the devil. You understand that? So this is not the time to watch people attack the prophetess or the prophet run on with you know who denomination is better this ain't the time for that this is the time uh, uh for the word of god no don't waste your energy on facebook live teachings and youtube links that don't concentrate on the word of god that's why on this show we are promoting we are promoting uh, a culture of just teaching and simplicity uh and explaining the word of god which is, I believe, is missing in the body of Christ today. And you know, and you know Pastor Butcher, with this generation, I believe that we have kind of deviated from simply teaching. Um, we kind of strayed away from simply teaching the simplicity of the Word of God. Um, because we are so busy trying to impress everyone. Um, we try to look more educated, to impress people. We want to look like we're more spiritual. So we find all these topics and discussions that has nothing to do with the word of God that we just grab in the sky. It sounds good. You know, it sounds exciting. It sounds spiritual and profound. Um, we, you know, we just love to take people on an emotional ride to the point that the word of God is put on the back burner while we promote our own agenda. You know, but listen to me. If you're watching this right now, based on the word of God, I declare that your faith through the word of God is increasing 
and fear is being removed even as you watch this program. I declare, young lady, young man, that as you continue to listen to the word of God, that your faith is going to come alive. Watch this. And that means that as we listen to the word of God more and more and over and over, that, that we're going to get to an immovable place where we have confidence, assurance in a God who loves us, that we're going to get to a place where we believe and have confidence in a God who knows our thoughts, who cares about our deepest needs. And as a result, our faith is going to be fueled to take care of our, 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 our um, um, health. Our faith is going to be fueled. Our fuel is going to be like fuel in a car to take care of our finances so that we will never be in lack. And so I declare to everyone making the sacrifice to watch this. Um, I declare that our faith is going to keep. I declare that your faith is going to sustain us no matter how bad the economy gets or no matter how far um, this co coronavirus spreads because with faith, depending on the word of God, we will watch and see God moving in our lives possible today. And I firmly believe that. Powerful, powerful. And I, I pray also that, you know, that we really focus on the word of God. You know, the Bible tells us that heaven and earth will pass away, mm -hmm. but the word of God will stand. And that was really powerful, um, what you said just now. But I know our time is up, Pastor. Exactly. Uh, but before we end, you know, um, could we just say a prayer for someone who might be watching the show and they may be battling or dealing with fear or disbelief or or loneliness or whatever it is they might be experiencing. I just want you to pray for that person right now, boss. Amen. Father, we just bless you. We magnify you, God, on this morning because of who you are. You're great. You're awesome. You are always a present help in the time of trouble and need. God, we, in the midst of what's going on, we still announce that you're majestic, that you are in control. God, nothing catches you by surprise. And so right now, God, I just speak um, faith into the atmosphere. For that person watching this program, I cast down fear. I cast down discouragement. I cast down uncertainty about the future, God. We need to understand that our lives are in your hands, God. You um, knew us from the foundation of the world. You knew this was going to happen. And one thing we need to rely on is your word, because your word says, I've never seen a righteous forsaken, nor has mother I seen me. Pray, pray. So Amen. God, our confidence is in, is in that word today. We believe, God, that with our faith and putting it to work as we face and applying it to our lives, as we face the basic challenges of life, God, that we're going to see the fruits of, of just depending on you, God. This is not our fight. This is your fight. We're just... Um, I'm trusting in you. This is how we fight our battles, prayer and fasting and, and praising you in the midst of everything. We don't need a building to praise you, God. We can praise you right where we're located. And so while even on Zoom, God, I believe that someone is praising you right now because of the breakthrough that they're going to receive because they put their faith into practice. And so God, I declare testimonies are going to come as a result of that person changing his or heart towards faith. We give the thanks, the praise, even right now in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Well, of course, you know, we're not done looking at this story, Pastor Mitchell. Um, you know, we're not done with this. So you can certainly look out for episode three as we continue to look at this story, the wind and wave, obey Jesus. Listen, if you were blessed by this show, like I always say on Grace Talk, don't be selfish with it. Be a blessing to someone else and share this video. The pastors and members and followers of Grace Church of the Nazarene would like to thank you for watching today's show. It is our prayer that you are encouraged and inspired by the word of God. So join us next time for another episode of Grace Talk. Trust me, Pastor Butcher. You don't want to miss it. You missed it. You missed it. You missed it. <laughs> Trust me, Pastor You don't want to miss it. Thank you very much. God bless all of you. Hello? Who are you? What's your name? Colac19? Oh, they say you. You come now, you just come into my place? Why you come here now? You told me you say you named Collect 19. Now I could hear all people talking. You say they gave maybe take people almost 100,000 people you collect. Now you try to come now to collect at me. Boy, don't play on me, okay? Go from in Bahamas, okay? We don't need people to you in Bahamas. You think you do be ready for me? You see, I could flash you. So don't get on mad on to me. I could flash you now, okay? If you think you be bad to me, I could take you off. Now, 
off don't play when i could take him i could make you off quickly but be careful to me you know if you think you bad i could blush you i could block on you now i could take you block on now you come here you try to know people know you you don't know you know be too so no manners to people like right now no people know you you try to come to come through no weapon bahamas continue to trust god he will bring us through there is nothing he said in his word that when the enemy comes in like a flood, his spirit raises up a standard against him. And I know that that standard is the word of God. So people continue to trust in God. Fear no longer abides in you. Fear no longer abides in me. Just continue to trust God.